Hey everyone, in today's video I am super excited because we are going to be doing a beautiful golden hour portrait photo shoot with this monster of a lens. This is the Sigma 105 f1.4 lens and I'm going to be using it on the Sony a7 IV. Stand way back. Yeah, oh yeah, that is so pretty there. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I love that with your arms stretched up for a shot there. Yeah, stunning. <gasps> I love this. The Sigma 105mm f1.4 is a prime lens which comes in a bunch of different mounts including Canon EF, Nikon F, Sigma SA, Sigma L and most importantly for today's video, Sony E-mount. That's so cute. This lens is a big boy. <laughs> the E-mount weighs 1,720 grams and has a 105 millimeter filter thread. This lens features an AF to MF switch, a focus ring, it has a screw on lens hood and a removable tripod collar, which as you'll see, I chose not to use during this portrait shoot. It would however come in handy shooting wildlife, sports or video, especially since it is ARCA compatible, so no extra plates are required. Wait, I have to show you quickly because it looks amazing. Pretty. So whimsical. It's my first time using it. It's beautiful. The 105mm focal length is really interesting to me and I personally love what it looks like. I have used the Sony 100mm f2.8 lens before where I also enjoyed that focal length but it's nice having the option for a shallower depth of field with this Sigma 105. I'll get a um, close up shot here. Wow that looks so cool. This lens is insane. And I'll leave that other video link down below if you're interested in seeing the 85 versus 100 versus 135 millimeter comparison that I did. For this photo shoot, I knew I wanted to have a really dreamy look to the photos, so we organized this photo shoot for the late afternoon so we could have that nice, soft sun for our lighting. I also chose this location so we can capture as much bucket as possible. I'm gonna get a shot, like a landscape shot, um, kind of cropped just above your knees. I don't wanna get that tree in the shot though. Do you wanna come and stand just here? I'll go in these bushes. Wow, that's stunning. Okay, so let's talk about lens flare for a minute. If you love dreamy, soft looking photos, you are absolutely going to love this lens for its flaring, but I do think there are some good and bad things about it. This Sigma 105 has a lot of ghosting when shooting backlit images. As you can see, I was using a lens hood throughout this entire photo shoot and still the majority of my backlit photos have a huge amount of ghosting. I personally love what this looks like. Mix in the bucket and depth of field with this ghosting and you can create the dreamiest looking photos. The dreamy factor of these photos reminds me a lot of the Canon EF 85mm f1.2 actually. Oh my god, this lens is making my arms so tired. <laughs> oh, I love that with both your hands up to your face looking really nice. But then on the other side, I do sometimes like having the option to capture backlit photos where my subject cuts through the light a little more. I was able to minimize the ghosting when I took portraits with Barry being more side lit rather than completely backlit, as I did want to have some higher contrast photos to be able to share with you in today's video as well. I'll get a few more of you there. I just have to go back into the bushy bit. Goodbye. Bye. Please don't be any spiders. The bokeh from this lens is absolutely stunning. It is huge, super round and very clean. And I just love what the bokeh looks like in all the images that we shot today. One of my favorite aspects of this lens though is the background to foreground separation. This is such a great lens to be able to melt the background away. Should we also try like it over the shoulder so we can get a little bit of the back too here? Yeah, lovely. A couple more from down here. I've got like a little bit of foreground blur from like these weeds that are in front of me. It looks really nice. 
One last thing that really stood out to me is the out of focus transition of the Sigma 105. It's one of the smoothest that I've ever seen. You can especially see it in the extreme close up photos we took. The way the face melts out of focus looks so incredible. Oh, I should get like a full body shot there too. Maybe if I come this way. Let's see. Oh, still too close. Unlike the Sigma 35mm f1.4 DGDN, which is designed for mirrorless, this Sigma 105 is available in many mounts as it's from the older HSM art line, which originally was for DSLRs. While it may physically seem like Sigma just stuck on an MC11 and caught it a day, they did not. I love all the movement that you do with your arms, they're so beautiful. <laughs> it looks really good. I feel like I would love to do a sitting shot somewhere where it's not too muddy. <laughs> oh, maybe here. Oh, that's so nice. Compared to using lots of the other adapted HSM lenses on Sony bodies over the years, the native E-mount 105mm does address autofocus. I was using continuous autofocus throughout this entire photo shoot and I felt that this lens kept up without an issue and it really felt like a native E-mount lens. This is great to see since there is a lot of glass to move internally in this 105. Those birds haven't stopped once. Like, it's just like a lot. <laughs> IAF was strong the entire time throughout the photo shoot, which you can see in the picture in picture. Autofocus performance was great as well, even through the extremely strong backlight and all the lens flare and ghosting, I was able to capture so many tack sharp images on Barry's eyes. I wanted to try some, oh, I've got the lens hood on. I thought it was off because like the lens flare is huge. I edited all these photos with my Amalfi Lightroom preset pack, which I'll leave linked down below if you want to get it for yourself or you want to see some more before and after photos. I thought it suited these images so well and I really love how they turned out. Something that I have been working on for my portrait photo shoots actually is playing around with more colors. I usually love shooting with neutral colored outfits, which I will continue doing, but I also want to start incorporating more vibrant colors as well. One of the problems with very vibrant colors, such as the orange of this dress, mixed in with the fact that I am shooting backlit, is that you get some very strong reflections of the colors on the subject's skin. In some shots, you can see a lot of that orange being reflected on Barry's face and arm. While I was editing the photos in Photoshop, I used a color mode layer and muted down that orange a bit so it wasn't super distracting. I could get rid of it completely if I wanted to but I do like a little bit of that color still coming through just for it to not look that strong. I'm gonna be closer again. Can I get you to stand on the other side of that branch that's hanging down? I really enjoyed using this lens and I absolutely love the results that we captured today. I have to say that this Sigma 105 f1.4 is one of the dreamiest lenses I've ever used and it's also a lens that I kept thinking about once I had used it. I use a lot of different lenses for my reviews here on YouTube and there are a couple of very special lenses that I have come across over the years that I can't stop thinking about. This is now definitely one of those. I was actually considering purchasing this lens for my own camera kit. The only downside for me personally is the size and weight. Physically, this lens is very big and it takes up a lot of room in my camera bag. At 1.7 kilos, I would probably only want to use this for shorter photo shoots like portrait sessions rather than full day weddings. Instead of a 105, a fast 135 prime can have a very similar look and I am working on a video where we compare the 105 to a 135 at a portrait photo shoot and I'm working on editing that so I will upload it soon. So we have this really cool spot here with a lot of bucket in the background. So I'm going to take a photo at f1.4, but also f2.8 as well. And I'll bring them up side by side so we can just take a closer look at them. The sun just dropped behind a cloud, but you can see like the golden hour in the background is cool. <laughs> look at that difference. It's like, boom, and there it goes. Dan was also very excited to try this lens for video, so here are some shots that he captured of Barry on the Sony a7S III. 
This lens is absolutely stunning for video as well. Dan was using autofocus for these shots and the lens keeps up really well while Dan and Barry are moving around. Just like photo, we have beautiful bokeh, depth of field, and a lot of flare and ghosting when shooting with strong backlight. Since we don't personally own any 105mm filters, Dan is using Schneider 4x5.65 ND filters in a matte box instead, which covers the lens without an issue. So that is all I have for today's photo shoot. It was so dreamy, so beautiful. I'd love to know which ones are your favorite photos down in the comments below and what you think of this lens as well. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.